I once had a very cute story. There was a family that was doing TP, and they had a very bad situation, and uh, the people on the block got really upset. They were walking on Shabbos past the house, and they see kids out there smoking on Shabbos. They're walking to shul, holding their kids' hands. They're crossing the street, get away, don't look. It was very uncomfortable for them. So, of course, I'm sure they felt bad for this family, Nebuch, that had a few kids off the derech and in very bad shape. But as much as they felt bad, they felt like this is not what we signed up for. You know, we moved to a Jewish neighborhood. We built from neighborhoods. And the last thing we want our kids to be brought up seeing is all of this. Now, the truth is that this is also a, a, a test of Ashirus, Nisayin Oishir. This comes out of great success because 60 years ago, 50 years ago, we, we didn't have these, these communities that were so airtight. People were happy to live anywhere, and they grew up, and they saw there was Goyim, there was Reformed Jews, there was family members. When Rup Shleiman Miller, who was the Paisic of Lakewood and, and Canada, when he was here, he said, people get so upset about uh, Chil Shabbos, you know, about the kids being Machal Shabbos. He said, well, when I grew up, half the family was Machal Shabbos. In America, in the 50s and the 60s, everybody had an Aunt uh, Sophie and Helen and Uncle Henry and driving on Shabbos and with the shorts, the, 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 the sleeves were till here, and no sheitloch. And the few people that were from, if anything, they, forget about being nervous for them. They were happy not to be attacked for being religious. You know, nobody, they didn't think about you know, attacking anybody else. Everybody, you know, everyone tried to do the best they can, but nobody was merachig. What did the Aguda Convention look like in the 50s and the 60s when Ramosha was there, Yaakov? Any of the women were wearing sheitloch, and that was the standard. You can't walk in unless you're tzniyas. So now we grew up and we created this like airtight, airtight communities to the point that we think that if our kids are going to go ahead and see, right, or they're going to hear a word, they're all going to go off the derech. Right? It's very frightening. So this, this whole block went to their das taira, and the das taira was uh, the rub of, the, of, that, of that area. And, um, and he made an appointment to go speak to the, the das taira of this family. Now the das taira of this family was the Nova Minskarema. He sent them to me. Shlita, so zayin Okay, now I happened to go to Nova Minskarema one day, at 2.30 in the afternoon, I sat with him for about a half an hour about a different Indian, and then he tells me, oh, Avi, you know, this family, the, this guy, the, the rabbi of this community is actually coming to see me in, in like 15 minutes, so why don't you stay? Okay, so I said, sure, no problem. So I stayed. 15 minutes later, the, the doorbell rings, there was a knock on the door, so the rabbi tells me, go answer. I open up, and the guy looks at me, and he's like, Busted. You know, he didn't know what to do. He thought he was going to have an audience with the Rebbe, and he's going to be able to say his side of the story. He came with his wife, with the Rebbeton, actually. And it was like, mucho, mucho awkward. You know, like, he did not make an appointment for me to be there. It was like Hashem just dropped me in there. So, um, fine, he sits down at the table, and the Rebbe was sitting there, and I was sitting over here, and I was, like, really uncomfortable. And the Rebbe says, speak. And, and he was so caught off guard, he could not talk. So he has a chash of a rav, and he was like, He's like, so uncomfortable. He's like, well, you know, and the Rebbe's like, I can't hear you. Speak up. Like, he's like, well, you know, I, we didn't, uh, we came because, what, what's the problem? <laughs> he's like, so finally the guy got, his rabbits and started speaking for him, and then he started speaking, and they said, you know, we're very upset about the, this family, that they're following Avi, and that they're doing this TP stuff, and then they're, they're, they're smoking cigarettes, and the father's walking around with his arm around them, and blah, 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 blah. So the rabbi says, um, okay, Avi, what do you say? So I said, my side of the story. So the rabbi looks at them and he says, he, he's the expert. So, I mean, he's right, you know. So they said, no, but you don't understand, whatever. So I said, listen, I understand how you feel. I just want to tell you that the, the reason why you're worried about your kids is because you were never trained in this sugya. And you never trained your kids in this sugya. I said, but I could tell you one thing. If they were my neighbor, I would not mind. And I wouldn't mind for my kids to see that. Because I don't believe that my kids are going to go off the derech by seeing people off the derech. I think that I'm going to teach them to look at them and say, we have something great, nebuch on them that they don't have that, and we can be makar of them, and to have deeper eyes, teach them, I taught my kids that these kids are not bad, don't look down at people, ahavas Yisrael, there's so many lessons to teach. I taught my kids that they're in pain. Even when my kids were very young, they knew that they're acting this way because there's something bothering them. I taught them to have Rahmanas. I taught them 
a lot of things. Amuna, Bitachin, Rachmanus, Havas Yisrael. I taught my kids a lot. And I brought them in, and I could tell you I don't have a problem if my neighbor would be those people. And the proof is in the group now. We have one of my neighbors is here. I don't have a problem with you. I don't have a problem. Walked outside, smell weed. And my kids know, yes, some people smoke weed. I mean, that's the chenach plan. They should never know that it exists. All right, there was one family from a certain neighborhood, and they said, we can't have our sister come to our house for Shabbos, even though she's a great kid, because we don't want our children, six, seven, eight-year-old kids, to see their aunt, who's 18, 19, 20, right, that she has, like, red nail polish. We sh- they shouldn't see that it's an option. Sh- like, they should be so Kaddish Vitar, they should never have to see that the skirt is not w- where we told them it is, because we're trying to raise them, that, there's only, that you have to be from Hasidish, Litvish, Yeshivish, and if not, there's no such thing. And what if they're going to then see that it's an option? That's Chinuch? Like this family from Tommy, a Satmar guy from, from Kiryas Yael. He finally told me, I'm willing to hug my son. He said, but I have ten other sons. I'm not going to hug my son in front of them, because if my, all my kids see, his mom is true. Everything I say is true. It's all mamish true stories that happened to me. He tells me, if all of those kids see me hug this son, who's Megillah, he shaved, they're all going to shave. Why would they all have beards and langa pious if they see Tati hugs and loves and accepts somebody who shaves, who's Litvish, who's, who's young Israel? He's modern. So I, said, <laughs> I said, so really, none of your kids want to be Hasidish? You mean if you would show them kids, anybody, like amnesty program, anybody who wants to shave, Tuesday this week will be an amnesty, you can shave and cut off your pace and I will accept you, they're all going to shave, nobody wants to be chasidish, you failed miserably at getting your kids to want to be like you, I said, what do you think is going to happen by your levaya? You're going to be passing around shavers? Why shouldn't you, you know, Tati's not around anymore. So he's like, I hear you. I said, why don't you teach them that we really, really want you to have a long beard and pace, right? We want you to eat herring. We want you to be like us. We want this. We want you to be yeshivish. We want you to have skirts. We want, But some people are not. And that's their choice and our job at that point to do what Rav Steinman said. Rav Steinman said exactly what to do. You bring the other kids around with tears in your eyes. You say, your brother, your sister, right? That person is not doing the right thing. So what does Hashem want from us? Not to criticize them, to make them feel so comfortable around us that one day they're going to want to be like us. It's so amazing. Don't say it's okay to, to break Shabbos. Don't, that's not chinuch. What they're doing is wrong. And now we need to know two things. Identify what's wrong and identify the solution. What's wrong is that they're eating treif to Mechal Shabbos or to Derech Nebuch, right? And there's a solution to love them so much, to make them more comfortable around us than anyone else in the world, so one day they're going to want to be like us. You gave them a mission. So you're telling me now that because my kids know, and my kids, my kids really know, that I absolutely love kids who are off the derech. So it's a so huge incentive to go off the derech. They know I will love them. They know I will love them. Because that's this is my whole life, is loving kids off the derech. So how, how could I, right, I'm stuck. It's like the guy who came to collect money from the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation about Lashon Hara. He came to collect money. I was saying, I was thinking to myself, I, I told him, I said, I could say anything I want to you. You're stuck. You can never tell anybody. <laughs> His whole life is the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation. He can't go tell anybody. Do you know what Avi Fischoff said? I, I could give, tell him anything. He can never talk Lashon Hara. He's cooked. Right? So I, I have to love kids off the derech. I really honestly do. Right? So my kids should all go off to Derech because if the only thing stopping you is that Tati is going to be upset at you, they know I'm not going to be upset. Why don't they go off to Derech? Why is, it's not an incentive. It's not an incentive to go off to Derech because my Tati will let me. And if the only reason your kids are from is because they're scared of Tati and Mommy, it's a very weak from kite and it's not going to last. And Shamshul Farl Hirsch said that when you bake your love into the kids, then they're going to listen to you, not just when they're in front of you, but when they're not in front of you, and when you can't even see what they're doing, and even if you're not in this world anymore. That's chinuch. Chinuch is to instill into the person to want to be good, not to be scared to do it in front of you. 
Because what happens when they get older and they're in England in yeshiva? Or they're anywhere in yeshiva? Or they go around the corner? Or you're not on earth anymore? He says, real chinuch is, is that, that kesher, that when Yosef was in Mitzrayim and he was stuck, he saw the mustuch neshel aviv. Because his father didn't force him to do stuff because I'm looking at you and I'm pressuring you to do it. He got in his kishkes to the point that when he was alone in Mitzrayim with a, with a Nisayan that was stronger than him, he was able to see his father. What do you see when you think of your father? If the kid thinks of his father and says, oh, he's, he wishes I was dead. He would just control, alt, delete. He's on his keyboard trying to, how do I get rid of this kid? Control Z, undo. How do I undo this kid? Right? Then it's not going to work. But if he sees the Dumusti Yukna Avi or Imi, and he realizes that this guy loves me, he's crazy about me, Niskasherim Aviv, emotionally he became connected, Yosef became connected to his father, it wasn't, he wasn't alone anymore. That's our job. So I, I'm not scared of my kids seeing Chil Shabbos and choosing Uvachar to Bachayim. They see it anyway. Give them what Rav Steinman said very clear. And that's what I told this guy. I said, I understand why you who are not trained and you're scared, and your kids who are not trained are scared, but I could tell you one thing. If the neighbors on the block of this family was me, Reb Chaim Glanz, right, Sani Perlman, Reb Yanki Horowitz, you know, all of the people who actually jumped in over the last 15, 20 years to actually know the sugya and deal with the sugya, Right, Rabbi Yitzhak Mitnick was in the, could be across the street, and, and all of these people from all of these organizations, any of them, right? We wouldn't mind. We wouldn't mind that that our kids going to shul sichel or Shabbos. We would say, yeah, look, some people are not from, and our job is to make them from. How? To have compassion and mercy. First of all, not even to make them from, just to love another Jew and not to look down at people. We have to be mechanech our children. Al tadin es chavercha. Don't judge another person until you walk in a mile in their shoes. And then at that point, you're already a mile away from them and you have their shoes. Keep on walking. Why would you be busy judging people? There's a word, one of these things that goes around, what are they called, those things that people send? There's a word for it. What? Mimes? Memes? 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 Memes, right? So it says... Be so busy working on yourself that you don't have time to criticize others. Like, and don't, don't criticize other people just because they sin differently than you. Hey, this is kind of for our children. They're going to see it anyway. You know, I, was, I felt a little bit bad one day that my kids grew up and at my Shabbos table there were some words that, that were said by, by Kips who came until they were housebroken. And a lot of these words were not exactly found in Yom Zemuchubad or Karibayn. They were a little bit ad libs, miris. And, and eventually, you should know, after, after they got housebroken, they calmed down. It didn't happen. Or in the beginning, it would just beep, you know, and then one of the older kids, you know, they are four months, three months. The whole thing was a year program, so, but they were older, they were calmer, would be like, dude, what? I had one kid who was cursing, 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 and another good guy said, dude, you can't say that. He goes, that's a bad word? Like, he didn't even know that this is a bad word, right? It's a bad word. So my kids were brought up hearing beeping words all the time. Is that chinuch? Horrible, horrible chinuch. It didn't make them want to say that. They knew that people, truck drivers and kids off the derech and depressed people, they use words that we don't use. Bathroom words, potty words, OTD words. There's all kind of words. Not for us. Just like we teach our kids, we don't talk Lash and Hara, hopefully. We also don't curse. Don't you tell your kids not to say H-E-L-L and S-T-U-P-I-D and other stuff. So there's a few more words on the list of, of my kids' words that we don't. So what? I, I, no, I never hear from them. There's, there's no incentive to talk like that. So that's what I told this, this parent, right? This, this Rebbe, this Revna thing. And they lost it the entire, unfortunately. Um, it was very embarrassing for them. Sad ending to the story is that they overruled the Navam Mitzkarebla. They got the, the rav of the school that the other kids, the siblings, were in to threaten the family that the kids, little kids, couldn't come to school unless they stopped this whole TP thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, the end of the story, I'll, I'll tell you off the tape, is uh, very, very devastating. Devastating.
how much devastating. One girl has a, a, a child now from an African-American, and the other boy is arrested with a bunch of African-Americans incarcerated in jail for armed robbery. It, it really was terrible, right? And all that was because, you know, they didn't... Th so it's, it's a normal thing for neighbors to say, I don't want this on my block. This is not why we built up a community. In Malasot, it's not 1980 anymore. Sorry, we have a new reality. Beautiful, wonderful families like you who have kids who are suffering and in pain and acting wrong. And therefore, we have to train. We have to train, train, train our kids, our siblings. Everybody needs to be trained. By the way, now that there's so many kids like this, all of kids of Klal Yisrael need to be trained. Because what happens is we have kids on second, third grade, seven, eight, nine years old who come home crying because the kids on the bus are making fun of them. Oh, that's your brother? How come he looks like a girl? Making fun of them about their siblings. So now the other regular mainstream kids in Klal Yisrael need to learn Ahavas Yisrael and not to look down and not to judge and all of these things because they're hurting their kids their age who have brothers and sisters. Why do you have a dog? Why does your sister dress like a gaita? All of these things. And they don't know any better. But it's an opportunity to raise our standards with our other kids, not to run away from them. Hashem didn't take 5, 10, or 15, or 20 percent of Klal Yisrael and make them go off the derech and all of this tumult in order that we should become like more. He's like, he's allowing us to raise our kids up to be mechanach them. Al pitayra, be mechanach them. Teach them what the Baal Shem Tev did. Teach them what the Chazanish did. Only Kirov, only love, only Kirov, only love. You bring them in, you say, listen, you're so lucky that you're in yeshiva and that you're matzliach, and other people are not. And you should feel bad for them. And what should you do? Smile at them and compliment them because that's what Rav Steinman taught us is eventually going to bring them back to be like us.